Latent heat is the energy that is needed for a substance to undergo a phase change or a change of state. During a phase change, the internal structure and energy of a material changes, but its temperature does not. So Q is equal to the change in mass times the latent heat. Now, this is the change in mass of the phase that exists at the higher temperature. So if ice, for example, is melting, this is the change in the amount of water, the change in the mass of water that is present. So some problems for you to try. From homework set 5, 112, one student should try 1 and 2, and 113, one student should try 1, 2 and 3. Okay, so this table presents some values for the latent heats. Notice that there's a latent heat of fusion, which is when we're changing from a liquid to a solid, and also a latent heat of vaporization, which is when we're changing from a liquid to a gas. So for water, it's 3.33 times 10 to the 5 to melt the ice, and 2.26 times 10 to the 6 to cause steam to form. Now some everyday examples where you'll be aware of latent heats is on a hot day you can add ice to your drink. The ice melts and as it melts it removes heat from the liquid surrounding it decreasing the temperature of your drink. So that's how ice cools down your drink. On a hot day you've also evolved to sweat a lot. Now this is because as the sweat evaporates it removes heat from your body as it requires heat to transform that liquid sweat into steam. Now this graph shows what happens to, a, to ice as we add energy at a constant rate. So we start with ice at minus 30 degrees C. As we add energy, it initially goes into raising the temperature of the ice. So the energy is being added at a constant rate, so the temperature of the ice changes at a constant rate. Once it reaches zero degrees C, we begin to melt the ice. So it stays at zero degrees C as, as an ice and water mixture as the energy all goes into melting the ice. Once all the ice is melted, the energy that then goes into raising the temperature of the water. So now all the ice is gone and we've only got water. So the temperature increases at a steady rate as we pump in the water. Now once it gets to 100 degrees C, we're assuming atmospheric conditions here, then the energy goes into changing the state again, so changing the water to steam. So that all happens at a constant temperature at 100 degrees C. Once we've added enough energy to change all the water into steam, the energy then goes into increasing the temperature of the steam. We've been saying that if we add enough energy, we can change the state of something. We actually require something else in addition to that. We need a disturbance or a nucleation site to start that phase change occurring. So a phase change needs a disturbance or a nucleation site to take place. Water heated in the microwave can get above 100 degrees C if it's kept very still. And then when it's removed, we're disturbing it, so it has enough energy to turn to steam and it will turn to steam very suddenly. This can cause very bad burns. So be careful heating water in the microwave because it can become superheated as there's no disturbance in it. If you add sugar or salt or something to the water, then there are nucleation sites. You don't have that perfect water structure and so it's harder to superheat it in that case. Okay, it's also possible to supercool water. You can chill water down below zero degrees C and then if you disturb it, it will suddenly change state and or become solid. Now this is a little video which I've grabbed off the internet showing what happens when you supercool water. So you can see this is a super cooled water and then when the bottle's shaken, the water transfers to ice. So this is super cooled water. A nice little effect. 
Another example of these nucleation sites forming is when you add Mentos to Coke. So let's have a look at a little video of that happening now. Okay, at this point I'm going to pause it and I'd like you to have a think about in which situation are we going to have the most dramatic effect. So just select which one you think, I've labelled them now A, B, C, D, will give you the most dramatic result.